folks, it's Robin Riley for Dobello's Designs. Today, I would like to show you the double stencil technique. Before I get into the supplies needed, I'd like to invite you to join us on our Facebook pages. We have one page called the Dobello's Design Lounge. That is where we showcase all of our Lavinia stamps and stencils. Our other page is called the Dobello's A La Carte. That's where we showcase Sweet Poppy stencils and stamps, Cardio, Nellie's, That's Crafty, and more items. Please join us on both pages and share your creations. I like to call this my card of courage. I think when you look at it, you can probably come up with different little critters or fairies that you could add in this section here so that you could use this card in many different ways. All right, let's look at the supplies that we're, we will be using. I will be using a four and a quarter by five and three quarter piece of white cardstock, which is approximately 110 pounds, and more importantly to me is 300 GSM weight. Next will be the stamps that we're using. The stamps that we'll be using today are just two. Lavinia Keeping Faith, which is LAV615. And the ink that I will be using for that stamp is Versafine Claire Morning Mist. Now, if you take a good look at this stamp, there are so many great words in here, very supportive, very encouraging words. Um, I won't be doing it today, but I encourage you to look at some of these words closely and you could actually fussy cut like the word motivation very easily, the word unite, the word courage, and use that singly onto a card. The other stamp, which is the large hair, comes from the Field Day A6 stamp set from Cardio. I will be using Versafine Claire Nocturne to stamp the hair. For my stencils, I made a homemade stencil from a piece of copy paper. I used two dies, a medium size and small size heart. If you don't have heart dies, you could cut hearts out using scissors. The next stencil that I will be using will be the Lavinia Glory stencil. This is one of my absolute favorite stencils from the Lavinia line. The other ink that I will be using will be the Distress Oxide Kitsch Flamingo along with a blending brush. I will be doing some embossing. I like to use the Emboss Clear Matte Powder. Any clear powder will do. I just particularly like the matte finish. I don't want it to be extremely glossy. Along with that, I will be using an anti-static bag. This prohibits the embossing powder from sticking in places where I don't want it to be. I will also be using a heat tool. My Misty will be used along with my nifty little tool here, which came from an air hockey table. This helps me get even pressure on my stamps and it's not so hard on my fingers. I will also be using, to draw my frame, a Prismacolor 01 black pen. This is a very fine pointed pen. For shading, I am using the Payne's Gray Polychromo pencil. You do not have to use polychromo. You can use any colored pencil that you have on hand. And if you don't have any colored pencils, just use a regular pencil that you would write with on a daily basis. That will give you a nice shaded area. If you would like, you could use a blending stump to smooth out the shaded area. Also needed will be a microfiber cloth and some water to clean your stamps. All right, let's get started. Starting with the blank piece of card, I'm going to bring in my homemade stenciled heart, placing it rather randomly. I will use my blending brush and the Kitsch Flamingo ink. I don't need a lot of ink, so I'm going to tap off some. 
I just want a very light coating of ink under this heart. All right, I'm gonna let you take a peek of how light that is. Now, leaving this piece of paper in place, I'm going to take my glory stencil and I'm going to place, very randomly to be honest, place this on top of the heart. This time I want a little more ink on my brush because I want a different shade of this kitsch flamingo. Only going over the heart area, adding a little more pressure than I did the first time around. I will remove and you will see what a neat effect that gives, doesn't it? Now, I wanna add another one of these large hearts over in this area, repeating exactly what I did with the first heart. A light coating of ink initially Let's take a peek, make sure I have enough ink. That looks good. Setting my glory stencil on top, not in the same area. I'm trying to get it to go a little bit in a different direction also. Adding more ink, pressing a little harder so that I get a different shade of the Kitsch flam Kitch Flamingo. Removing both stencils. Now I want to add a third heart. I'm trying to keep all the hearts at different angles just for interest reasons only. A light layer of pink. And then I will take my glory stencil. This time I'm going to flip it upside down because I want the pattern to go in a different area, a different direction. Adding more ink so that I can get a darker layer on the top. Pressing a little firmer. And there I have three separate hearts with designs. Now just think of all those stencils that you have in your stash and how you could double them up to get some really creative looks. All right, I wanna place my stencil down onto the card again. Very random, I'm putting this on, no rhyme or reason. I'm not going to re-ink. I'm going to just use the ink that is currently on my brush. And I'm going to go over the entire stencil lightly because I want this to, this to appear in the background. I'm not being too particular about the pressure. Some of it's a little harder, some of it's very light, because I just want that degree of interest that I'll get. And there it is. Isn't that a great technique? Think of all the fun you'll have doing this. Just one of my favorite ones. All right, let me clean off my workspace a little bit, and I'm going to grab my Misty tool placing my card in the corner. And before I do that, I'm gonna take that anti-static bag right now, and I'm just going to tap it all over my card lightly. I want a light layer of the powder. I'm going to place my sentiment stamp I'm gonna try real hard to get the words perfectly straight.
using my VersaFine Claire Morning Mist. Now my pad is getting a little bit dry, so I may have to double stamp. Whoops, pressing that onto my card using my air hockey tool. I am going to apply a second layer. I want it to be a little bit darker and I want the embossing powder to adhere nicely. All right, that's much better. Now I'm going to remove this, close my Misty up for a moment because I don't want the embossing powder to get on the inside. What's nice about VersaFine Claire's is it stays wet longer than some other inks. So you don't have to rush too quickly. And it looks as if my anti-static bag worked well. I don't see anything adhering to the other parts of the card. Now, excuse me for a minute as I heat set this. As you saw, I did heat from the front and the back. For me, it feels as if my card doesn't warp as much. All right, that looks pretty good to me. I have a nice matte shine. Placing my card back into my Misty, I will now place the hair onto my card. Let me make sure he's secure in the corner here. Using the VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink, I'm going to try to get him done in one stamp. Hoping that this is wet enough. If not, I will stamp a second time. All right, I'm actually rather happy with that. I'm not going to have to stamp a second time. Now, if by chance you don't have a Misty and you run into that issue once in a while that you don't get a good, clean, clear uh, image, you can just use a marker, a Bic marker, a Sharpie black marker, and fill in the areas. That'll work. All right, the next thing is I wanna ground my hair. I don't want him to appear as if he's floating. So using my polychromo pencil, I'm going to just simply add a piece of ground for him. Going to lighten it up as I carry it further out. Now, remember I told you, you don't need to have any fancy or expensive colored pencils you can just use a regular everyday pencil by using a regular everyday pencil you can actually move it about with your finger i am going to use the blending stump just to get a smoother look of the the ground and the shadow behind the hair all right that's that's good now for the frame that I want to place around my card. I'm trying to get this straightened out. First few times I tried these frames by myself, I was a little bit nervous and I was worried about my lines not being straight. But the idea is not to have perfectly straight lines. You want it to be a little bit wonky. So a few tips when using these pens, 
you don't want to press hard because if you have a fine point like this, and as I told you, this was a 0 0.01, that's a rather fine tip. You can break the tips real easily, and that's the end of your pen if you do that. Next tip being that when working, always pull towards yourself in that direction. If you can't work vertically and you need to pull sideways, that's fine. Whatever you're comfortable with. The other thing is to not focus too much on the point of the pen as you are drawing that line. You want to always be looking a little bit further ahead as you travel down the paper. Believe me, that really works. When I started to do it that way, then I had better results. So starting at the top, I'm just going to slowly pull my pen down towards me, trying to focus a few centimeters ahead. As you can see, it's not perfectly straight, and that's perfectly fine. Turning my paper, I will continue this line. Turning, pulling towards me, always looking where I'm traveling to. Look a tad bit further ahead from that point. And the last line, pulling towards and looking at that tip where I want to stop. Lastly, I'm going to add some heartbeat lines, which are just little squiggles, kind of looks like what your heartbeat looks like on an EKG. You can add as many or as few as you like. I tend to stick to odd numbers. I tend to keep my heartbeats going in the same direction. That's just me. You could do it any way you are comfortable, any way you like. This is a good way too, that if, you re if your line really took a bad turn to cover up and nobody will ever notice. All right, being that I made that hand-drawn frame, I am not going to back this card. This card will go on a four and a half by six card base without that frame behind it. I just like it as is. I don't want to add anything else to it. I want this simply to show a message of courage and motivation and hope to whoever receives this card. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you give this technique a try, the double stencil technique. Please post your creations on one of our pages so we all can see how well you did. Okay, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Thank you.